Whether it's your first time here or you're a regular here at Mr. Super Raz, I just want to thank you for tuning in to the channel. It exists because I, Oz, from the channel Mr. Super Oz, I wrote a 68-page graphic novel called Everlasting Survivors. Volume 1 is called All Day Long. If you follow the link in the description of this video, you can get yourself hats, shirts, posters, all kinds of fun things. But most importantly, you can get the story itself. And the more people that pick up the story, the greater the chances are that there can be continued adventures with these heroes. If you could, give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment. Enjoy. I would like to reiterate the fact that uh, the gentleman villain is a smart, smart man. And when he dethroned uh, the young, uh, well, not that young, but yeah. whatever, yeah, the young -er, yeah. uh competitor Edge, he outsmarted him and he won't give him his uh, rematch because... He's a smart fox. With, within the rules of the, the Intercontinental Championship. Well, all championships. All championships, exactly, within uh, the company. You only have to defend every 30 days. Um, mandatorily, you only have to defend only every 30 days. Right. Otherwise, you lose your title. Right. However, this uh, reality is really rubbing SmackDown wrong because... With Triple H as the Undisputed Champion and a shared champion between Raw and SmackDown, right. he's not always there. Like we see him, and he's had a match so far. He's been, uh, you know, styling and profiling. Yes, exactly. He's been uh, he's been living the life of his most favorite folks, the yes. Four Horsemen, uh, which is which is great for him, but yeah, it's right. not so great for SmackDown itself. And so, um, on SmackDown. Uh, January, February, March, April, May, May the second of two thousand and two. Um, Stephanie decrees to William Regal that this weekend in his home country, he has to defend his Intercontinental Championship against Edge and Jeff Hardy. So, with that being the case, William Regal takes the night off on SmackDown. He he's there, but he's, right. he's not competing. He's not yet. He's there to look good. Exactly. He's uh. uh He's scouting uh, all the competition. He's he's lording over his subjects, if you will. Um, but like I said, it's primarily uh, on this episode of SmackDown helping promote the insurrection event, um, which he is clearly the face of. Oh yeah, exactly. Why would he not be? Right. Uh, you know, his lordship is the biggest <laughs> European star within the promotion, if you don't count D'Lo Brown and Al Snow, that is. Right, right, of course. Uh, you know, those two... Legendary star, European yes, wrestling Yes, stars, stars of, the, of, the, of the, the the entire country. European scene. <laughs> scene, exactly. I love that. Um, but yeah, so my big main event that I book for this episode of SmackDown is uh, Edge, Hollywood Hulk Hogan, The Rock, and Booker T taking on what has been redubbed XL Factor. Uh, X-Pac, Just Incredible, Albert, and The Big Show. Um, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of weight on that, too. <laughs> exactly. And so, um, with the addition of The Big Show with Albert, that is what adds the L for right. large uh, to uh, X-Factor. I get it, because he's, he's The Big Show. Exactly. Brilliant. And so, um, in a shock of all shocks... I actually put the heels over in the main event. Wow. Um, so, Is that a first for you? I don't think you've done that. Yet. Well, it's not from Regal. Well, so, well, yes, Regal went over uh, as a heel, but the reason this is important is because The Rock, yeah. Hulk Hogan, yeah. Booker T and Edge lost. Yeah, that's, that's so, crazy. So, obviously, it's not elimination. It's not Survivor Series. So, uh, what happens is uh, Albert and Big Show, they double team, they beat up, they soften up, Edge and get him prepared to take an X Factor, uh, the finish, not the the, the group. Oh my gosh, Sean Walton wins, wins in the main event. Uh, Sean Walton wins in the main oh event. Oh my god, I love At Insurrection over the weekend, mm -hmm. uh, X Pac and Just Incredible, <laughs> exactly, they, uh, they tag up to take on the current reigning, defending, and subsequently losing. <gasps> Cruiserweight tag team champions Spike oh, Dudley and Crash Holly, and uh, in the UK 
at Insurrection on uh, May the 4th. May the 4th be <laughs> with you. That's funny. Uh, I, I just caught that that was when the show was happening. <laughs> nice, um, nice. XL Factor become tag team champions. Um, also, with what I'm booking on the show, because Josiah's got him some stuff to sprinkle into uh, Insurrection as well. Right. William Regal defends against, as I already teased, defends against both Jeff Hardy and Edge. Um, this time, there's no count out. There's no disqualification. Two things that William Regal's already used to his advantage. Um, but what he does, because he can't get disqualified, he blatantly uses the brass knuckles to knock out Edge. And then he holds Jeff Hardy's belt on his uh, pants when he rolls him up. And so... He uses two tactics of cheating to outsmart his opponents. Cheating at a high level. And so, um, Insurrection uh, sees one title change in the Cruiserweight Tag Team Division and then a title retention by William Regal with the um, Intercontinental Championship. Yeah. And so, um, while we're here at Insurrection, what did you have planned there, my man? Yes, sir. Um, so, obviously other stuff happens on the show, but yeah. for simplicity's sake... Um, I have uh, Van Dam defending his U.S. championship, and he is defeating it against his uh, ECW brother in yes. uh, Tommy Dreamer. The Innovator of Violence. Innovator of Violence. Yeah, that's a great and nickname. It, isn't it? That's probably one of the best <laughs> nicknames I've ever heard. And yeah. uh, unfortunately, since Dreamer loses all the time, yeah. it, no one really thinks about it. But um, keep with that consistency, uh, Dreamer loses. Yes, but, absolutely. <laughs> can't, he can't be uh, breaking that trend. Yeah. Um, since it's Van Dam and Dreamer, obviously EC Dub chance. Oh yeah. Um, it's a little it's a hardcore match just because it's Dreamer yeah. and Van Dam. Yeah, ain't nothing wrong not? with that. Ain't nothing wrong. Um, with that. but yeah, you know, just um, some silly little fun. They they of course embrace afterwards mm-hmm. because they're they're boys. Ain't mad at it. Um, and then uh, lastly, we kind of co-booked this last one, but the main event uh, we have Triple H uh, taking on uh, Kurt Angle and the uh, newly uh, coming out with the newly minted. Manager, valet, whatever terminology you want to use of Stacey Keeler. Yes, and oh, I is, love this alliance. Yeah. So, um, so I was talking to Ahmed earlier in the week, right? And and we were just both praising your booking of uh, a man who is so technically sound, uh, using the assistance of Stacey mm-hmm. and her uh, technical prowess to. To have that laptop out there and analyze his opponents. It's very cerebral, right. like the cerebral assassin exactly. himself. But um yeah, I, I I don't know how you booked it to end, but I, I, I think that because very uh this is a UK exclusive pay per view yeah. and very few are gonna watch it, I think that you could probably get by with doing like a uh, a double disqualification where Ric Flair is out there with uh trips wooing it up. And Stacy's out there with Kurt, you know, type tippity typing on her, her keyboard, and yeah. they both managers because they're both kind of uh, actually I think not, they're, not both kind legit. Of, they're, they're both they're both heels. both legit heels. I think yeah. you could probably get by with like a comedy D- DQ finish, um, just because you know it's, it's a it's a B level pay per view. Yeah. I mean, it's like a D level because yeah. it's only purchasable in the UK. Oh yeah, that's right. It was yeah, and and that's why I didn't full on book Insurrection. Whereas what I do actually full on book and. I know it's your show next, but I'm going to tease before yeah, yeah, we get yeah. to Monday Night Raw. I do full-on book Bash at the Beach. So, May of or May 19th, oh my goodness, another date that is relevant, and in this case, it's because of See No Evil and uh-huh. Kane. But May 19th, I have Alpha Entertainment Worldwide keep Bash at the Beach relevant because throughout because all they of... Because and they should well, do Not it. only do they own it and should they do it, but throughout all of my booking... Of the Wednesday Night Wrestling Remix, mm-hmm. Bash of the Beach was a important show throughout the calendar year because of the formation of the New World Order. And so why not keep things that are were important, current, mm-hmm. uh, keep them relevant? So I maintain Bash of the Beach, Starcade, and I, Halloween uh, Havoc. Well, what I do with Halloween Havoc and the Great American Bash, I make them TV specials, uh, not okay. pay-per-views. So, um, okay, so, you're so I... Full-on uh, just a little bit of uh, backstage stuff for everybody watching. Uh, I, I actually sent Josiah the red version of this. And so anytime that we got to July 4th or around it, I would brand it Great American, in my case, SmackDown, or in his case, Great American Raw, because 
Um, generally speaking, it made more sense to book the TV show as the Great American whatever, mm -hmm. it, as opposed to bringing back Great American Bash as a pay-per-view, because generally pay-per-views happen at, toward the end of the month, yeah. and the 4th of July is at the very, very beginning. The very start. Yes. Yeah. So, so it makes sense that having two pretty much back to back pay per views. Yes. Just have a nice TV special and then. And yeah, and it's and it's uh, it's brand and NXT does it now actually. Yeah. Uh, bringing the Great American Bash as a TV special as opposed to a pay per view. Well, shit, I don't think NXT has any more pay per views anymore. But yes, you are correct. They do do TV specials. Actually, they're doing their oh, first. Uh, no, you're good. They're doing their first on tour premium live event, Vengeance Day. In the month of February. Oh, good for them. Um, and I'd say on tour outside of the performance right. center. So they're leaving Orlando. Yes, it's in somewhere Carolina. Oh, okay. Wrestling City? Okay. Probably North Carolina, but I know it's I somewhere would, Carolina. I would, I would guess. Yeah. Um, especially with a Steiner. I yeah, mean, I would, I would call hope. It. Especially right. with a Steiner on top. Like, come on now. It ought to be a Carolina. I mean, it or, is a, uh, North it, Carolina. It, it's a softball toss-up for sure. Yes. Um, um, but, but getting back to the to the main event, uh, I'm probably fine with the double DQ. Oh, it's, good. Thanks. In, in, insurrection, so I don't care. Yeah, exactly. Neither, um, neither do they. Throughout the match, uh, you kind of see how the Kurt Stacy dynamic works yes. out. Um, so it starts out basically with just basic Triple H uh, versus Kurt. Kurt's like kind of wrestling. Triple H gets the upper hand. Kurt slides out and kind of talks to Stacy. Stacy types on her keyboard, whispers in his ear. Kurt gets back in and takes the advantage. You know what this reminds me kind of? of vibe. A very little, or a, a little bit, I mean, is when Arn was man, a coaching, as he put it, coaching Cody, and he looked at the paper and he would tell him the advice. Exactly. And that's and, kind of uh, where I got the inspiration from. It's the same uh, logic. Well, it's, it's just good, it's good thinking yeah. when, it comes to, when it comes to booking. Man, I love Cody and Arn. Oh, it's great. It's I love so wrestling. Great. Wrestling, wrestling is, is great. Good. Wrestling is so great. <laughs> but yeah, it's just um, something to kind of give you the idea of how the Stacy um, Kurt relationship is going to work in the future. Um, Triple H still looks good because he came out as world champion. Ric Flair. Absolutely. And the double DQ, nobody lost. So Kurt still technically on his losing streak. Yes. But also did not lose it.